uh, the Labor Party is happy to support these changes. Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Chairman, the uh, clause we're speaking to at the moment is clause 5, uh, which um, is, is brings in Schedule 1, uh, which is implementing the 2008 uh, reforms. And, and, Mr Speaker, that's the uh, area I, I want to speak to. Uh, and as my colleague has done, I want to also refer to uh, the 1961 Act. It's, um, uh, it's a period slightly before my experience uh, in the Parliament, but I think, but I think many of us, uh, many of us have. 1961, you were born, Trevor. 1961. 61, you were born. Uh, well, I, 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 I give the member an assurance I was. Um, uh, Although I was trying, was it Harry? I'm trying to work out. Was Harry Lake the minister? I was trying to work out who the minister of finance was. Was it Lake in the um, John? You'll remember in the in the uh, Holyoke uh, government. Lake, yeah. And, Mo, and subsequently Muldoon. He was uh, an under secretary later on, and then a then a, then a minister. Uh, but so I, I'm assuming Mr. Lake was involved uh, uh, in these discussions. Although, uh, given the uh, given some of the history, uh, I wouldn't have been all, at all surprised uh, if Walter Nash, my predecessor uh, in, in the Hutt South area, um, my, well, not my immediate predecessor, <laughs> there, there were one or two in between us, but I think, I think it's fair to say, uh, and, and I think, I think, uh, I think uh, Mr Banks uh, remembers uh, Mr. Nash, Mr Nash as well, uh, and, and Mr Nash um, I, I think was 86 when he left the parliament. So he was a person of considerable experience, someone who was involved in the first Labour ministry and involved in a lot of international, a lot of interna a lot of international discussions in the fight. Sorry, no, N N Nash was a member of Parliament into the 1960s. Yes, yeah, in into the 1960s. But he was first a, a member of Parliament in the 1930s. But he was 86 years old. Uh, at the, at the 80, 86, succeeded by Trevor Young, who the, uh, the member will know well. And, and, and I, I, I know it's not quite strictly no, uh, within not. the, within the, within the, the bounds. But I think I'm fascinated. That, I think, but would you come to the point? That, that's right. And, and I'm sure I can work the fact that they were both temperance members of Parliament uh, into, in, in, into, into the debate. They were. They were. They were both. And I think it's fair to say that Trevor Young was the last of, of the uh, temperance movement. Uh, members of Parliament, John but Carter sorry, John Carter oh, I don't think John Carter was. Ever, <laughs> I, I think John Carter might have been a, a temperance member off and on. Uh, normally, normally the morning after. Normally the morning after, um, uh, Mr. Speaker. But getting 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 back uh, to the uh, the IMF and the fact that it was first brought into our legislation uh, in, in in 1961 uh, as part. Of, in fact, it was the uh, the first schedule uh, to the then, I presume it was uh, the International Finance Agreements uh, Bill, um, and w which, which subsequently became the Act. Uh, but, Mr. Speaker, there's pretty substantial reform uh, occurring uh, in this in the schedule and in, in these changes. Uh, and in the first area of reform that I'd like to refer to uh, is that uh, which is part of Article Five. Uh, of the substantive um, legislation uh, being, being uh, amended here. Uh, and, and in that, uh, section 12H is repealed uh, and it is uh, substituted. Uh, and and it, it goes to uh, pending use of specified under uh, uh, F uh, above. So I'll just get to uh, uh, F. Which I'm just having a little bit of trouble finding. I'll come back. I'll come back to that as a subsequent uh, call, Mr. Speaker. But pending use is specified uh, under under uh, F in in section 12. I will I will actually be able to find it. It's not too far away uh, from here as part of the uh, of the first schedule. Um, the fund may use a member's currency held in the special disbursement account for investment uh, as it may determine in accordance with the rules and regulations adopted by the fund by a 70% majority 
uh, of the total voting power. And, and one of the things that I'd be interested in uh, from the minister in the chair uh, is an explanation, which, which I think is part of this and the, Mr Chairman. Honourable Trevor Mellor. Uh, and, and the next part, an explanation of the changes in the, in the voting power uh, as a result of the rebalancing, which I understand is about a 5% uh, rebalancing, and whether uh, that affects the position of the United States, which had, you know, has had almost effectively a veto. It, 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 the IMF, the Asia Development Bank, it's sort of like where Japan goes, the ADB goes, but the IMF, it's where, um, where the United States goes, the IMF goes, and I think uh, I'd be interested in the, uh, in the government's opinion as to whether the rebalancing uh, by about 5 to 6 per cent uh, of the balance of the, uh, of the ordinary capital uh, does in fact uh, give a, a change in effective control uh, of, the, of the IMF. But the, clearly if we go back to uh, the, the new section 12H, um, the, the income and investment the income of the investment and interest received uh, has to be put into a special disbursement account. Uh, and then there is a new additional K that is added uh, to Article 5, uh, and, and that is, um, uh, Mr, Mr, Mr Chairman, uh, that is a relatively important area uh, because it has to uh, do with the use of gold and, and effectively uh, the, the, the gold standard use uh, by the IMF. Um, and, and it goes to when it, when it sells gold uh, under, uh, after the date of the Second Amendment of this agreement, because I think we know that there are two parts to uh, this particular 2008, well, there are more than two parts to this 2008 uh, amendment, um, the, the proceeds equivalent to the acquisition uh, price of the gold should be put in the general resources account. Uh, and if there's a, any excess of profit, it goes into the uh, investment account uh, for use uh, pursuant to uh, Article, Article 12 uh, of the um, International Finance Agreement Act uh, 1961, although uh, of Schedule 1 of that, but of course what we're talking about is effectively uh, the constitution uh, of the IMF. Um, shall I, I move, uh, Mr Chairman, to uh, Article uh, 12, uh, which is another, uh, which is relatively important, uh, which goes to the appointment of, um, of alternates. Uh, th there has been, uh, I think, quite a lot of debate uh, within the IMF and, and some of the other institutions uh, around the use of alternates, the powers, whether they have full powers, whether the absence uh, of the primary uh, executive directors, because they, they, they have, a, have a number of executive directors uh, in this area. In fact, they're you know, relatively well-paid uh, executive uh, directors. But what this does uh, is, is put a requirement on each of the executive directors, directors to appoint an alternate uh, with the full power to act for him. Now, I just want to ask the Minister in, in the Chair uh, whether it is just a, um, an old-fashioned approach from our current Minister of Finance that he didn't accept the possibility that an Executive Director uh, of the IMF could, in fact, be a woman. <laughs> and, 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 well, it's, you know, one, one, one might laugh, but given the fact that it's Bill English, that it's Bill English who's involved in this, he, it just might, you know, he, he still has recurring nightmares about Jenny Shipley, um, but, the, but the possibility, the possibility that an, either an executive or an alternate director of the IMF uh, could be a woman does not appear to be contemplated uh, in this legislated change uh, to the uh, IMF's uh, constitution. Um, and and what it also um, allows is for some of the executive directors uh, who are appointed by more than a certain number, uh, specified number of members, that's, that's um, people who have effectively multi-member multi constituencies um, in, their, in their position uh, as an executive director, 
um, and it allows them to appoint two alternate directors. And, and so that's, uh, that's, uh, it is a, that is getting to be a pretty uh, unusual situation. Um, and, and that person, Mr Chairman? Honourable Trevor Mellor. Uh, Mr Chairman, uh, that, that person then has to do a designation um, as, as to uh, which uh, alternate should act uh, when the person uh, is absent. Uh, who should exercise the powers, uh, and and what effectively happens as a result of that is an is an ordering of the an ordering of the positions uh, of the uh, alternate uh, directors. Uh, also within uh, Article 12 um, is is really the um, operative clause uh, as far as the rebalancing. Uh, of the power of the IMF is concerned. Um, uh, section 5A is repealed and a new Section 5A uh, is put in, which indicates uh, that the total votes of each member shall be equal to the sum of its basic votes and its quota-based votes. And, and that is, a, uh, you know, that is a, a, a pretty standard um, arrangement. It's been like that for some time. Um, but uh, what is happening here is a, is, a, is a rebalancing, and the basic votes of each member shall be the number of votes that results from the equal distribution of all the members of 5.502% uh, of the aggregate sum of the total voting power of the members, providing there should be no fractional basic votes. And, and if, one, if one thinks about it, um, it, it, it gets pretty hard uh, to start exercising part, part of a vote. Um, you, you either have a, you either, you've got, either got a vote or you, or you don't have a vote, and, and um, having something passed by a fraction of, vote, of a vote within the IMF is probably uh, not the most logical uh, way. Um, and the, the quota based votes for each member shall be the number of votes that results from the allocation, one vote for each part of its quota, equivalent to 100,000 special drawing rights. So, what that what that effectively does, uh, Mr. Chairman, is do is give to the IMF um, a lot of power to the people who put in the drawing rights. It's uh, you know it's a, I suppose it's a bit like the taxation and representation uh, type story, and that is something where the United States has, for a very long period, uh, been the primary organisation. Uh, to fund the IMF, I think, as we, as we know, there is some rebalancing uh, occurring. Um, section within um, Article 12, um, Section uh, 6F3 uh, is, is changed, and that has uh, to do with the use uh, of particular currencies. Um, and, and the fund, uh, and, uh, and again, this is, this is a sensible sort of thing because it means that there's not a uh, there's not the same sort of currency risk uh, to individual cur currencies. The fund may use a member's currency held in the investment account as it may determine in accordance with the rules and regulations by the fund, uh, adopted by the fund by a 70% majority uh, of the voting power. And, and that, um, that I think the, the fact that the 70% majority is sitting there was something which, uh, and, I, and I'm not sure if uh, my colleague, the Honourable David Cunliffe, uh, was involved in the discussions here, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's something that the Honourable Dr Michael Cullen uh, was relatively keen on at, at, at the time he was a governor uh, of the IMF, uh, because what that meant was that things could not, could not be uh, sort of tipped over or pushed through by a, by a very small group of countries, given the uh, imbalance uh, of, the, of the funding uh, in, in that area, um, and, and, and clearly there is a, a wind-up clause uh, to do with the investment account, uh, and I think that I think it's well. The, no, there's a possibility at some stage that the IMF's role could change. It may it may choose to focus. I, I note the scorn on the face of the member for Hamilton East or West. Which one is? West. 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 Well, well, no, no. I just, oh, I just forget which of them, which, which of them comes from where. You know. uh, it's, it's uh, well, that, that's, that's, well, it's, 
the man, maybe I'm just blocking it out. The, the member's a disgrace. He's, a, he's, a, he's an embarrassment. He's an embarrassment to Hamilton West, an, impar- an embarrassment to Hamilton West. But, Mr Speaker, going back, going back to the point, it may be that, um, that the work that the IMF is meant to do uh, in the advice, especially around currency type issues, Mr Chairman. Alfred Naro. Oh, Mr Chairman. Yeah. The question is that the question be now put. Those of that opinion will say aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. Party vote. The clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes opposed. Green Party. 14 opposed. New Zealand First. Seven votes in favour. Māori Party. Three votes in favour. Mana. One opposed. Act New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Okay. United Future. One in favour. Brendan Horan. Would uh, votes will be held in silence? Ayes are 71, noes are 49. The question will be put. So the question is that clause 5 stand part. Those of that opinion will say aye. Contrary, no. The ayes have it. Clerk will conduct a party vote. New Zealand National. 59 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 34 votes in favour. Green Party. 14 opposed. New Zealand First. 7 votes in favour. Māori Party. Three votes in favour. Mana. One opposed. Act New Zealand. One in favour. United Future. One in favour. Brendan Hall. Ayes are 105, noes are 15, clause 5 will stand part. The question now is that clause 6 stand part. Honourable David Cunliffe. Uh, Mr Chairman, I rise to take a uh, short call on clause 6 of the 25 or 30.